Hello, it's Tuesday, which means it's time for another quick Maya Q&A. This week, Elbert asks, When using the camera's focal distance, is there a way to precisely set the number instead of constantly typing values? I'm trying to create a shallow depth of field for my render. To start off with, I think the depth of field is really something that works quite well as a post effect and you can really save a lot of time if you don't have to render it. However, if you've got no other choice but to add it into rendering in your scene in Maya, Arnold does have a very simple depth of field and it lets me actually expand a section that I wasn't very familiar with when I created my exterior lighting tutorial. So I've set up a simple street scene along with Kayla and I've created a camera called Shot Cam which I'm going to scale up so it's nice and easy to see. And then in the attribute editor I can scroll down to the Arnold tab of the camera and look for enable depth of field and tick the box on. Now if I open my render view there is currently no depth of field until I type a value into the aperture and this number will depend on the size of your scene. In rough terms larger scenes will need larger numbers and smaller ones will need smaller ones. So I'll start off with a value of 5 and everything becomes really blurry because that focus distance is really small it's only 5 centimeters in front of the camera. Now the cool way of automating where your focal distance goes to is to go to create measure tool and choose distance tool. And I'm going to click roughly from the camera to where Kayla is. Now if I go to the outliner and I select the locators that go with the measure tool, I'll scale them up to make them nice and visible in the scene, and then I'll rename them. One to camera lock, and the other to target. I'll then select the camera and its relevant locator, open up the animation menu tool set and I'll go look for a parent constraint. Make sure that the maintain offset is turned off and that way the locator will be connected to the camera and centered on it. Now I can move the target locator or the camera and the distance tool will tell me the precise distance between the two. Now all I really want to do is to have this value constantly update the camera's focal distance. So I'm going to select the distance tool from the outliner and go to Windows, Node Editor. I'll expand the distance dimension shape and look for a value called distance. Now what I want to do is to select the camera shot cam from the outliner and make sure that the Arnold tab is visible in the attribute editor. Then I'll go back over to the node editor and go to middle mouse button drag the distance property from the node editor all the way into the attribute window until a dotted line flashes around the focal distance. And that will change the depth of field as I move the locators around the scene. If I increase the aperture size to 20 to get a shallower depth of field, you'll see that Kalo remains still in focus. Now I'll turn that back down to a more reasonable 10. I think a nice way of automating this further is to use a simple align script to set the focal point just by selecting different objects inside of your scene. Now don't worry, I'm not going to make you type any code. All I want you to do is to select the object that we want to focus on and then shift select the target locator and we're going to go ahead and make a constraint again. This time we'll make a point constraint, turning off maintain offset and then I'll go back into the constraints menu and choose constraint, remove target. This means that the locator is moved to the object and then I've deleted the constraint I've just made, a really old fashioned align tool. Then I can go into my script editor down here and copy the last two mel commands which are inside the script editor just by choosing the history and selecting and dragging up onto the shelf that will create a mel button that I can just use with a click. So now just by selecting those objects I can quickly move the locator and the focal point to that specific object. Now the only downside of this method is that I'm aligning the objects to their pivot points which might not be in the right place because it might not be on the surface of the object or your pivot point might be centered onto your scene. So now if I look at my render view I can quickly move the focal point around the scene from the fire hydrant back to Kayla over to the phone booth in just a few clicks and this allows me to set things up really 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 quickly. 
just to finish off, I will bring the focus back to Kayla. I'll select the geometry for the light and I'll go into Arnold and I will create a mesh light. I'll tweak around the exposure and the color temperature to add a bit of a rim light to Kayla. I'm then going to cheat and make some lights out of a simple area light, which I will then change its shape to emit from a circle and I'll position it slightly under the lamp. Afterwards, I'll make a sphere that I will just position in place and create a texture with using a standard Arnold material. And then I'll turn the emission property all the way up to one so that it glows a little bit in my scene. I'm doing this as the background is so blurry that I really only need to suggest the shape of the lights rather than trying to add a lot of complexity to my render time. It would be more accurate to use the visible lights and you could play around with their size and intensity to make various effects. For example, if I change the aperture blades to 3, the lights will change their shape as they hit the camera to have a more triangular streaking like effect. Although it depends very much on the size and distance of the light, you'll notice that the further the lights are away from the camera, the more pronounced this effect is. I'll change the blades to 5 and give it a nice pentagon-like shape. And it would be really cool if this effect was more consistent across the image so that every light had a little bit of a streak to it, but that's all I've managed to do with Arnold so far. When rendering, you will have to increase your sampling, especially for the camera anti-aliasing. Your necessary values will really depend on the shaders present in your scene and how many objects and how they're scaled inside of your scene. You may need to increase also the ray depth as well. The numbers I'm using here are just a guideline as my scene has been made with very, very basic textures. But after all that's done, you can now render out your scene with depth of field and you've got the advantage that you could even animate the focus changing across your scene just by adding some keys to the locators. Thanks to Elbear for their question and to you for watching. I'm finally catching up with some more recent questions, so please keep them coming by dropping me a line in the comment section below. Like, subscribe and hit the notification button if you want to know when I'm releasing my latest videos. Thanks for watching until the end and as always, keep learning, stay strong and I'll catch you next time. Bye.